very interesting things being done, but there is not enough international, national, or local policy for enforcement. So, do you have any solutions, any ideas of how we can go? I, I totally take your point, you're right. All these wonderful things are less accessible than accessible. That's a, that's a good point you make. I, I think that there are several uh, pretty significant policies in place, both at an international level. Let me mention to you the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, which was issued uh, in 2006. That was one of the uh, conventions which was the most rapidly adopted in the history of the United Nations. I think there were more than 160 countries which have signed up. But signing up is one thing, and implementing it in your own respective countries is quite another thing. Uh, that's one thing. We ourselves have recently published uh, UNESCO because this problem seemed to us to be very critical. Uh, it's the first policy guidelines on how to make open and distance learning more accessible. So it really gives you a step-by-step -step approach on how to think right from the beginning at the design stage itself. The problem is, you see, you build a building. And then you say, how will a person with a wheelchair go up? You have to bring the hand. You design a mobile phone, you don't make it friendly for the blind people. And therefore, when you actually make a limited edition for blind people, then it is much more expensive. So this is the thinking which has to change. Everything has to be planned. That's why we say at the design stage itself, uh, when you design curricula, when you design course materials, when you, if at that stage itself you are inclusive, then inclusion doesn't, inclusion doesn't become an afterthought. That is very, very crucial. So there are instruments at the international level, there are instruments at the national level. Now I think we need, as I always believe, we need some champions who really push the agenda and say, I'm going to make all my course materials, all my course work, 100% easy. So I think that is what's going to take off. And once the government sees, I think they are fully aware of it, just that there are so many other priorities, but this doesn't seem to be a priority for them. And I think it will make a big, big difference. And like you rightfully said, countries like the US, uh, the European Union, they have passed a strict district laws where you can even be penalized in case your contents, post contents, etc., are not accessible at all. So I think we are getting there. It's taking a lot of time. And the irony is that the number of disabled people is not decreasing, it's increasing. I don't want to hog the time, but I think the point about uh, we always say architecture cannot be I am a distance educator, so uh, I want to know I have participated uh, that is all uh, virtual conference conference in Malaysia. Yeah, they, they have organized a conference in Malaysia, but previously uh, one month we have participated the various with various countries. Uh, regarding the distance education. What is the future of distance education in inclusive? We have all these national committees and commissions, etc. If at their level itself, if at the level of NCRT, if at the level of the Ministry of Education, there is a concerted effort, there is a clear-cut policy, and it is enforced, I think open and distance learning can go a long way. And by the way, uh, we co-organize a conference with the Commonwealth of Learning, and we are working together to uh, to make sure that open and distance learning definitely becomes accessible to people. But it's a long way to go. There are a lot of hurdles, uh, technical, financial, and other hurdles. And here I would like to add another dimension to it because I had an excellent, excellent job, talk with uh, uh, Professor Bhandavadhyaya yesterday, uh, which is about the local language context. I mean, again there, uh, Kumar, I mean, all the examples you gave, it's all English content, all of it, of whatever you showed us. So the Haiti is not Creole? Yes, so that was perhaps the only exception. But you know that Creole is not a, a very major language in this world. Uh, so I think that is another challenge for open business learning, that there is so much of good content which is there in local languages, but you don't see much of it at all in open business learning. And that's why the initiative taken by IIM, I think, is very interesting because we are now putting all the content in Bengali. That will be accessible not only to the whole of West Bengal, but Bengal is in other parts.
parts of, of the region and in the world. So I think that again requires a lot of emphasis because one of the reasons for which uptake of open and distance learning has been slow is also because of the limitations in terms of locally uh, available content. 